1039 Florence, Alabama, located at 1031 Hermitage Drive, where you will hear the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but gospel truth. Brought to you by the Jackson Heights Church of Christ. It's 76 degrees. Hi, I'm Barry Gilreath, your host for Fabric of Family. Today we have a program that is guaranteed to be controversial, straightforward, and politically incorrect. So gather together the family and buckle up because it's time to begin Fabric of Family. In Him, all families are blessed. Join our discussion. You know, as each year passes, it seems that America is drifting further and further from God's original pattern in the home. What was once unthinkable in terms of marriage and family is now of little concern to more and more people. Who would have ever dreamed that our nation that was founded upon principles of godliness and righteousness, and a nation whose currency reads, in God we trust, would now have laws in about a half a dozen states recognizing same-sex marriage, while others are also considering legislation. In our program today, we want to examine the concept of same-sex marriage and consider what this is going to mean to the traditional family as it is presented in the Word of God. And should Christians be concerned with the agendas of those who wish to legalize same-sex marriage? And does God really care? We have all of this and more in store for you today. the term same-sex marriage is brought into a conversation, what goes through your mind? Disgusting. That's not God's plan. What do you think, let's say a child were being adopted and a same-sex marriage couple adopted that child, what are your thoughts about that child's future? I would say he has a very poor future ahead of him as far as going to heaven and following God's plan. Do you think it's important for a child to have a mother and a father in the home as role models, given the circumstances? I absolutely do believe that. It's good for the children. Well, we're back, and this is uh, the part of our program in which we uh, have a panel discussion. And we're going to be uh, examining our subject today. As, as you know from the introduction to our program today, our, our subject's going to be uh, controversial. Uh, it's uh, going to be a subject that um, uh, really uh, perks the interest of a lot of people because it is something that uh, we hear on the news, we read about it in the newspaper, and there are definitely some changes that are taking place in our country today. Uh, I am delighted to have with me today for our panel discussion uh, two gentlemen, uh, the first being Tyler Gilreath. Uh, Tyler is the evangelist at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. And uh, we're very happy to have you with us, Tyler. Also, uh, we have with us Jim Dearman. Jim Dearman is the evangelist at the White Oak Church of Christ in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And he is also the host of the television program Good News Today. Uh, gentlemen, we're glad to have both of you with us to uh, talk about uh, really a very important subject uh, because we're, we're hearing more and more about same-sex marriage. and. Uh, I predict uh, before long, uh, if this continues, uh, this will be something that uh, just the general public won't even think that much about. We'll talk about same-sex marriage in the same way we talk about uh, what we might consider a traditional marriage. Uh, but why do you think that America is going down this road of embracing same-sex marriage? Uh, I first want to say it's a privilege to be here on the show with you today. and. Um, looking forward to some things that we're going to talk about, um, but regarding that question, uh, I would say that probably a majority of the people really don't know how to make a real marriage work. Um, you know, the Bible's been very clear. Of course, it's a God-given institution, and when you start deviating from that, you're going to have some problems, obviously. And I, I would say that a lot of wives don't know how to let the husband lead, and a lot of husbands don't know how to lead, and or they won't or refuse to lead. And uh, I, I just think a lack of biblical knowledge, of course, the Bible says, you know, on one occasion my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And when you have a lack of knowledge in the home regarding what God's, you know, wishes are uh, for husband and wives, 
then you begin to have some problems. Jim, wouldn't you agree with that? Oh, yeah, and I'm delighted to be here, too, uh, and to be with you two men. Uh, I appreciate you both so very, very much, and you're a good family. And speaking of families, uh, uh, the, both these men come from one of the finest families I've ever been blessed to know. And, um, but in terms of the, um, uh, the pluralistic society in which we live, I think, I think the political correctness, uh, correctness issue um, has um, spilled over into the moral realm to the extent that... Um, we see the uh, the effect of it uh, with the acceptance of so many things and of course it all gets back to as Tyler points out um, as uh, Hosea said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge God through Hosea made that statement Hosea 4 6 and that's the key a lack of respect for the biblical uh, standard and lack of knowledge of it and of course if I don't have a uh, healthy respect for it I'm not going to spend any time uh, uh, trying to determine what the Bible says. I think it's based upon um, a lack of a specific standard, the specific standard being the Word of God, and the, um, the um, proliferation of uh, political correctness uh, mindset, uh, that, that mindset that so dominates the, um, uh, the world today, that, that, in, that um, inclusiveness that has um, become so prevalent and um, just the thought of um, taking a stand against a particular issue, whatever that may issue be, uh, has become more repugnant to people. And those who take that stand have been ostracized more today than, than ever before. So I think it is the loss of that respect for, for the, biblical, the biblical standard. I also want to add this, that, you know, um, I've been seeing a lot more, um, I know at least where I live in Dalton, um, homosexual uh, marriages, or at least, uh, I don't know if they're officially married, but, uh, you know, that's they would claim that they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been seeing a lot more of this, and um, I would say that a majority of the people that would consider themselves to be homosexual, um, a lot of them, at least that are older, they've probably been married before um, to perhaps a, a man or a woman, you know, like, like God designed it, but for whatever reason, it didn't work. And uh, perhaps it was because they didn't know how to function in the home in that specific specific role and perhaps the wives they wanted to take on the role of the husbands and you know yeah and and, and vice versa yeah yeah and uh, because it didn't work they said well yeah. this doesn't work so let's try something else uh, well that's a good point that may be some of the, uh, the well problem. you know you know it used to be selected that, focus uh, the way it do was not described disturb. was a christian view <clears throat> regarding marriage and then there was a secular view uh, but now you you hear various even religious groups who want to proclaim that um, uh, same-sex marriage is compatible with Christianity. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I guess my question would be, does the Bible give any encouragement uh, at all to a same-sex relationship? Well, I think the answer is clearly no. And But you're right, Barry, that there have been those who, um, believe it or not, have actually tried to take Scripture and justify um, the practice of homosexuality, and thus, when they can do that, they could also justify homosexual marriage or same-sex marriage. But the, the Bible is abundantly clear from Old Testament to New that um, that homosexuality is an abomination to God. It is a sin. Has been from uh, from the beginning of time until this uh, point in time. And there's no way to honestly uh, justify it. But as all of us well know. Um, perversion of the scripture is not something new and uh, there are those who will actually not just simply say I don't care what the Bible says I'm going to do it anyway there are those who will actually say I believe the Bible condones it and uh, and yet that is totally indefensible and passages make that abundantly clear from Old Testament to New. Well, what are some of those passages that uh, come to mind that would uh, bring this this point out? Well of course uh, in, in Leviticus uh, 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 the law of Moses uh, speaks clearly about the fact that, you know, for two uh, two men to lie together as uh, as a man and a woman is an abomination before God. Uh, when you come to uh, Romans in the New Testament, for example, in chapter one, um, uh, God makes it abundantly clear through the inspired writer Paul in Romans one uh, twenty six and following there 
that um, uh, they have uh, perverted God's law, those in, uh, in former times, as he refers uh, to them. Uh, the passage, to look at it specifically, uh, says they did not, this is verse 28, well, verse 27, uh, likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful. How much more information do you need to know that the Bible says this is shameful? And receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all, listen to it, unrighteousness. Well, what is righteousness? Righteousness simply defined as doing God's Commandments, yeah, doing what right. God says. Right. Unrighteousness then has to be doing what is opposed to what God says. So that's how it's described. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, etc., uh, all of these things. Then when you come to 1 Corinthians 6, the Apostle Paul, and this is important because it, it makes it abundantly clear to me that the homosexual lifestyle is just that, a chosen lifestyle. And there's a great deal that is said about, well, I, uh, a homosexual is born that way. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. You don't buy into that I don't, I, idea? I don't buy into it because the Bible does not, that, and, and that's what we have to go by. And I think 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 makes that abundantly clear. Also, there is... Uh, there is uh, evidence uh, from, you know, from uh, studies that clearly show there have been those who have come out of uh, homosexuality, have come away from it, and have given up that lifestyle. Well, um, could they have done that if they had been born that way? Why would they have even thought they could? But listen to 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now Paul then writes to these Corinthians, Christians now, and such were, past tense, some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Would God condemn someone for something that he has absolutely no control over? Um, God is a just God. Uh, besides that, the point is, Paul says, you were some of these things, including homosexuality, and yet you were washed. In other words, you repented. You turned from that. It was sin, and you turned from it. And we see cases today where where people have done that very thing. They are continuing to do that very thing. And there are organizations out there that are designed to help people come away from the practice of homosexuality. And so, no, I do not believe for a moment that, uh, that it is something that is a genetic uh, issue. I think it's a sin issue. And as, as I have often said on Good News Today, the program I'm privileged to host, I have said, we do not hate the homosexual. We hate the sin of any uh, that in, in which anyone is involved, but we do not hate that individual. But um, to excuse it or condone it based upon the fact that God uh, uh, created you that way is something the Bible simply does not endorse. I think it needs to be pointed out also that uh, that passage that you read there, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, again, it said that those shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, I've heard some suggest uh, that, you know, why can't we just... Uh, maybe baptize these folks and um, hope eventually that they get out of that situation they're in. Well, clearly, you know, in John chapter 3, uh, we have to be baptized in order to inherit the kingdom of God, John 3, 3 through 5. But repentance has to come before that. Uh, I know on one occasion um, John the baptizer refused to baptize uh, some Pharisees because he said, first, you must bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. And I think, well, it's not just what I think, but what the Bible teaches, that we cannot accept people in this situation, and we cannot baptize people in this situation until they repent, until they change their lifestyle. We shouldn't baptize folks and uh, accept them into the family of God if they're going to refuse to do that. Well, you uh, remember Jesus when he... Uh, met the, the woman at the, the well of, from Samaria. Uh, um, you know, he, he was very clear in his teaching about her immoral 
uh, situation. Of course, it was a little bit different uh, in that she uh, was married to a, a man that wasn't wasn't her husband. But also think about the time in which you had the woman who was uh, about to be stoned. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, people are oftentimes very quick to point that out, and and uh, and rightly so that that God is a forgiving God. But it's very significant that we don't overlook the fact that Jesus said, "Go thy way and sin no more." All right. In other words, repent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it could be there. There's some who are watching the program today who may may say to themselves, "You know, this is not uh, something that's a reality in my life. It's not something that." Uh, that I struggle with. It's not something that um, that I, I have in my family uh, unit. Uh, so why should I even be concerned about this? Why should I uh, be concerned about, uh, you know, what another state far removed from me may pass regarding legislation? Because the state that I live in uh, doesn't endorse this and doesn't recognize same-sex marriage as being legitimate. Uh, what would you say to, to someone who might be of that opinion? Well, I would say that uh, once the uh, once the uh, floodgates are open, so to speak, uh, then uh, where do you stop stop this kind of thing? And uh, the more states that adopt it, the more the greater the likelihood is that it, it that it will spread, and uh, that um, there will be a more um, accepting attitude toward this because it will become it will become more prevalent uh, as more and more states do adopt it and um, ultimately you find yourself uh, in the minority as you oppose it and ultimately overwhelmed by it not that you personally have to embrace it or endorse it but um, it, it will come uh, uh, it will come to your state potentially uh, if we just simply do nothing and say basically that's not my problem and I'm not going to speak out against it. I'm not going to do anything about it. We need to we need to do everything we can, uh, and, and also because um, others are affected. We need to be concerned if we are claiming to be followers of God and Christ. Um, it's not a question of what doesn't affect me personally. It's what affects uh, God's the pinnacle of God's creation, which is man. And I need to be concerned about my fellow man wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And so, and think about the children that are impacted potentially uh, by, by this. And I've got some statistics that I may have time to share uh, a little bit later on about the negative impact of same-sex marriage upon children uh, who are being brought up in those households. There have been some documented studies made that say that those children are negatively affected and there's no question about it. Well, if that hasn't come to my state, if it's in mm. anybody's state, uh, there are people who are being adversely uh, affected. I need to be concerned about Well, i tell you what, let's hold that thought right there because we're about halfway through this segment in our panel discussion. And let's go back out on the street with Wes Ayers and let's hear a few, few more comments from those uh, that he meets. same-sex marriage is brought into a conversation what goes through your mind it's sinful it's sinful it's biblically wrong and we should stand up for that so what do you think happens to a child who might be adopted and is put into the situation of a same-sex marriage home I feel sorry for them I really do because the parents male or female are going to be raising them and most likely um, home that's not Christian based it's, it can't it couldn't be so um, I just feel sorry for the child I'm opposed to same-sex marriage I don't think that's the way God intended for it to be the Bible is plain on a man and a woman constituting a marriage union well we're back and uh, we just heard some comments from uh, individuals uh, who were on the street the particular evening that our cameraman as well as Wes Ayers uh, was out on the street asking some questions regarding our subject of study uh, this morning. Same-sex marriage, does God really care? Uh, Jim, you indicated that you had come across some statistics regarding uh, children and how they are affected if brought up under a uh, household in which there was a same-sex couple. Why don't, why don't you just share some of that with us? All right, okay. Well, this, uh, this was a story from One News Now written by Charlie Butts and Jody Brown. 
Um, and the study was that the youngsters of homosexual households are negatively affected. Now, when this study was done, it was being hailed as the most scientifically credible study so far on the issue. And it demonstrated that children are definitely harmed by growing up in homosexual and, and lesbian households. Um, and I won't read all of it, but just some highlights. The study analyzed data from nearly 3,000 American adults ages 18 to 39 who were raised in, quote, different types of family arrangements, end quote. And the results, according to principal investigator Mark Regneris, he was at the University of Texas at Austin, he, uh, these results reveal, quote, numerous consistent differences, especially between the children of women who have had a lesbian relationship and those with still married heterosexual biological parents. And that effectively dispelled this paradigm that said there is no difference. That's the contention that is made, that there is no difference. But there is a difference. And uh, this study uh, revealed it. Um, uh, here's some things that are pretty startling. Uh, for example, you're more likely basically to get molested in a household by two, led by two lesbians. You're more likely to have sexually transmitted diseases. You're more likely to identify as homosexual. You're more likely to be on public assistance, part of the study. And you're more likely to have been forced to have sex unwillingly. Uh, big difference here, 8% in a normal household versus 31% in a household led by lesbians. In addition, one raised in a homosexual or lesbian household is more likely to have thoughts of suicide. And so, bottom line is the study proves that having a mother and father really matters. Now, interesting, after this study was done, it was uh, strongly criticized by some. I can imagine, imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in fact, there was a fellow by the name of, uh, he's an activist blogger by the name of Scott Rosenweig. He calls himself Scott Rose. He actually filed a complaint because he disagreed with those mm -hmm. findings. So they convened a panel of experts, the University of Texas did, to put together uh, an investigation to research this. Well, there was a follow-up story also done by Charlie Butts at One News Now that uh, uh, that uh, uh, exonerated Regneris in terms of this uh, false charge that uh, that this uh, research was uh, flawed and. Um, the conclusion, it was a comprehensive, this is uh, David Hacker, who's an attorney with Alliance Defending Freedom. He says, this was a comprehensive, peer-reviewed research study consisting of leading scholars and researchers across disciplines and ideological lines in a spirit of civility and reasoned inquiry. So what came out of all this was a memorandum from the University of Texas at Austin declaring that not one of the allegations of scientific misconduct from this man named Rose was substantiated in any fashion. The study holds up. Wow. The study is valid. Mm. And that is startling. Yeah. And it tells us, the, and, and it, it really reinforces, why should we be shocked to learn that there is a negative impact uh, upon children who are in this kind of situation when the Bible makes it abundantly clear yeah. what marriage is to be about and what the home is to be about, and this is not the biblical description of the home. Yeah, and, and God is the originator of the home. That's right. And He knows what's best for us. Exactly. And, and uh, tells, and, and, you know, it's not just the, the same-sex uh, marriage no, no. Uh, that we're talking about today. It can also be a, a situation in which you have someone who is uh, married legally to someone in a heterosexual relationship, but uh, they're not scripture surely married uh, to, to that person in the eyes of God. And, and that also has uh, an adverse effect upon uh, children in the home as right. well. That's right. You That's know, we had mentioned uh, before we uh, broke there just for a moment that uh, how does homosexuality and all these things, how does that affect our nation? Um, I, 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 I can't leave this alone. I have to mention two passages of Scripture because this all ties in together, as you know, um, because all these single uh, events here equal the, the country as a whole. And we can't just say, well, here's one person and this one person doesn't affect us because really we're a nation. And, and I'm proud to live in, in the United States of America. But I see some things uh, going on here like we're talking about today that will affect it. Let me just read very quickly Jude 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, 
suffering the vengeance of eternal fire, we should look at these nations and say, hey, this is a mistake, and this is how God dealt with this nation. And all these single events we can kind of undermine and say they're not that important, but really those cities were made of single events, and there were a lot of single events. And you read other passages such, such as Second Peter 2, 4 through 7, uh, which said, For if God spared not the angels when they sinned, but cast them down to hell, and committed them to the pits of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the ancient world, but preserved Noah with seven others, a preacher of righteousness, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, having made them again an example unto those that should live ungodly. You know, the world needs to look at the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, right. They need to yeah. see the mistakes that they made and how God dealt with them because if if this thing spread, continues to spread, then I'm afraid our nation uh, will be dealt uh, with severely by Almighty God. Yeah, and sometimes we think that, uh, you know, we as America are invincible. All right. Uh, but the truth of the matter is there's never been a superpower to exist that has not fallen. All right. And if you look back at the fall of all of these superpowers, it, it has to do with the fact that they began to disintegrate oftentimes from within. You think about the Roman Empire and um, all of the immorality and uh, that existed and how that, that eventually weakened that nation from within and it, and it fell. And, and it can certainly happen to any nation and that, that includes uh, the United States of America as well. There's something else to bring in and along these lines I think too in regard to that Barry and Tyler and that is that you remember that Abraham was pleading for uh, for Sodom, you know, and uh, and sparing, mm -hmm. and uh, God finally said, you know, uh, after the process <laughs> had worked its way down to ten, if you can find ten righteous souls, I'll spare it, and they couldn't. Uh, but what that says, though, is that God recognizes the power of influence, and that if they could have found ten righteous souls, He would have mm -hmm. spared that. Right. Well, let's be those righteous souls in this country in which we live and exert an influence in every way that we can mm. so yeah. that hopefully God will uh, spare uh, America. It, it's, it shows the power of influence. All right. Uh, good discussion today. I want to thank you gentlemen for uh, being with us and uh, we need to continue this maybe on another occasion. But uh, thank, thank you for you. being here. I appreciate it. Enjoy the program. Mm. Well, that's our program for this week, and we hope that we've shed a little light on this ideology that's gaining ground amongst many of our lawmakers. You know, marriage is an institution that is created by God, and man doesn't have the right to come along and alter that which doesn't belong to him. Same-sex marriage is sinful, and there's no authority for it in the Scriptures. Just because some man comes along and passes a law that recognizes a relationship as being legitimate, it does not mean that God does the same. The psalmist wrote, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. At the Jackson Heights Church of Christ in Florence, Alabama, we care about the morality of our nation. In fact, we'd like to offer you a free home Bible correspondence course to help you with your understanding of the Word of God. Again, it's free. No one's going to call you or visit you. We just want to share with you this study that can help to enrich your life through this wonderful avenue. We hope that you'll tell your friends and family about our new program. Next week, we're going to be talking about uncontrolled anger. And so until next time, I'm Barry Gilreath, host of Fabric of Family, minister of the Jackson Heights Church of Christ, wishing you a great day. Make the most of a minute. Jesus' sense of power is, well, upside down. In major corporations, for example, the power is at the top, and in some way or another, all those beneath that serve the upper echelon. Ready for a shock? Here's Christ's system for living as a Christian. He that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. Matthew 23, verse 11. Doesn't that seem upside down to what we're accustomed to? But you know it's right. Want the secret of being happy in this short life? Learn what Jesus is saying. Greatness 
isn't how many people I can get to serve me. Greatness is in how many people I can serve. I mean, th th this can be a great day for you. Find somebody who could use your help and serve him selflessly. I'm Glenn Colley, hoping you make the most of your minutes. Timer. Button. Notes. Button. Hearing the music record selected. Screen.